Right, final video on the scimitar and some of the last supporting things I'd done to make that car work. The ECU off the Omega, I used that. It had a, it's a Bosch 35 pin one, I think. I cut the end of it off, just angle ground the circuit board away from the connector and then um, tagged on a load of wires, all the ones I would need to get the engine running, yeah. And some spares, a lot more spares for the future proofing it. And then I wrapped some uh, tape around it and filled it with araldite, so, so it's made in this... Um, solid sealed connector and then uh, added these stainless steel tabs top and bottom uh, which overlap with some sealer and then bolted that to the bulkhead so in the engine bay it's then like a reasonably neat installation you can only pull one huge connector off and completely disconnect the engine and inside the car uh, that bulk so that that um, I just made a whole new loom section there uh, with some internal uh, connections from the Omega again um, so there's, you can see there's one connection to the engine, which bolted to the bulkhead, there's one to the ECU, there's one to the LPG ECU, which is subsequently gone, uh, there's a little serial connector for the uh, laptop, and then there's one connect, uh, two connections um, to the car's ECU, uh, to the car's loom, I'm sorry. So this is kind of like a bridging piece of loom, which connected all those components together. So the ECU... I went with a Kenems, a Kenems ECU, which is a UK-based company. They're still making ECUs, and the one I have in the scimitar is the bottom for the range one. I think there was only two or three available then. There's more now, I think. It only has two injector channels, so mine are batch firing in two batches of three, and it has four ignition channels, yeah, of which I'm using three because it's wasted spark. It has two maps, um, a number of inputs, I don't know, three or three two or three inputs two or three outputs it's not it's not many but at the time it was 475 pounds i think it's well under 600 now still so it is a very cheap way of getting a, an engine to run i think you can yeah you could you could fire a, a v8 with it it's simple but it's good so i'm finding its limitations are, are with cold start um idle Idle stability is okay, but uh, that's to do with the batch firing, really, rather than sequential. But yeah, anyway, uh, for my next project, I'll be getting a much more expensive, uh, much more capable ECU, I think. But it is fantastic, the the Kenems. I can't fault it. It's, it's so cheap and it's so easy to use. It's got a good interface. Um, so yeah, that's why I went with it. It's only 30 wires, I think, um, on the on the connector. And the the chap uh, uh, Dave, I think it was, is quite supportive when I um, when I was having crank position sensor problems. Uh, he even sent me a second ECU in the end. We we finally got to the point where it might have been the ECU, but uh, it was not the ECU. It never is the ECU. Um, so yeah, this is another thing. Actually, I had to put a I cut a new crank tr trigger wheel on the front pulley and had it balanced again afterwards. The one in the crank case, which. Um, is standard with the car, it just uh, doesn't give a very strong signal at all and we, we weren't really able to make it work so but subsequently it's worked very well yeah so that's the ECU the fuse box, this was quite a project the scimitar fuse box was useless and used the old type fuses had uh, heat damage to it and um, not every circuit in the car was fused which was quite amazing so I used this the, heat, the fuse box from the Omega wired it all in so I got loads of spares uh, added a lot of fu fuses, obviously, for the um, modern uh, injection system as well. That went in the footwell. You can see it here uh, in the original. Obviously, the carpet was removed, but the original um, footwell in a wall. I redid the car's loom to, to a great extent as well. Uh, I put a wideband sensor in, and you can see here where it goes under the chassis. I just couldn't seem to find another way of doing it. Uh, but there's a little protective plate where the, where the cable goes under the chassis. I put some Toyo T1R tyres on them. They don't make those anymore. So I've switched to the NS2Rs now, the Nankang tyres. Um, and the other thing, yeah, I put a, a, roll, a career half roll cage in it. So I sort of thought the original cage was quite... Well, the original roll hoop was rusted away quite badly, so I just... Um, replaced it completely so I put very strong uh, connections to the chassis I think I might have mentioned those in the chassis repair video and then some triangulation pieces and then a whole new roll hoop um, and rear stays to the to the rear chassis uh, so it doesn't add uh, <coughs> anything to the car's rigidity which is perhaps a mistake uh, some side bars might have been better as well and some uh, some bars that come over the top of, of you and down the A-pillar but um, no, it's just a rear roll cage, rear half cage so if the car ever went over the, the fiberglass roof would not collapse in on me um, so after a little after a little driving the car around and trying to map it myself uh, I found obviously the transient um, well, the issue is you need to hold the engine steady to figure out exactly how much fuel it's putting in at certain RPMs and throttle positions uh, for enough time for the 
this, this sort of the, the running to stabilize and the exhaust gas measurement the um lambda the wide bear lambda sensor to take an accurate measure then you can affect the change uh, adjust the fueling and see what that change has brought you and then do it again so the issue of course with this car even not very well tuned but with any car in fact is when you put your foot down uh, you know anything more than 20 or 30 percent throttle it begins to accelerate so you don't ever get the steady state which is why you need a rolling road to hold to hold the rpm steady that's the whole point of a rolling road and, and tuning really <clears throat> so i went to mark maynard's in uh, stroud or near stroud mark maynard's yeah and we did a, about an eight hour session there on his uh, rolling road um, tuning the thing up so uh, he, he was uh, good to me he let me heck stick around in fact I sat in the passenger seat and operated the laptop uh, under his guidance and um, he operated the rolling road and we sort of dipped in and out of the high load areas and, and uh, the low load areas had a fan going the whole time and I was, I was monitoring the uh, coolant temperature and that and uh, and we sort of slowly mapped the thing a bit of fuel a bit of ignition a bit of fuel and uh, and we got it in, in fairly good shape really certainly for that middle diagonal of the you know light load at th low throttle and high load at high rpm and uh, you, you can really do it for hours and hours and hours but you have to sort of think of a, a cutoff point obviously where the cost becomes not worth the benefit so yeah we did about eight hours and uh, and my goodness did the car feel better afterwards it really smoothed things out that was around 10 years ago and that's really where i got a taste for <laughs> rolling road tuning uh, i knew i'd enjoy it but yeah i'd love to do it if i ever had the opportunity and guess what? The opportunity came up. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> so that was tuning the scimitar. That really is the end of my scimitar project. Uh, I redid it. I put a new clutch in, took the LPG out, put the new nut and can tyres on, and a number of other little jobs to get it really up and up and sorted again uh, about a year or two ago. And there's a lot of videos on, this, on the Scimitar playlist. Um, but that was it. So it, essentially it was finished around 10 years ago now. And it's done 13,000 miles since then. Uh, yeah, so it is, now that the LPG tank is gone, it's a car that weighs 1,100, it's 1,100 kilos, I think. So 1,180 with me in it. Um, it does, well, I took it to Santa Pod and had a, a number of races, and, and it seems to do a 13.8 quarter mile. Um, so while I've not actually timed the 0-60 uh, with an accurate piece of equipment, I believe it's between 5 seconds and 5.5 five and seconds. Uh, and that's the number of things. It's got a very torquey engine. The, the, the thing makes 250 foot-pounds of torque, uh, but it's 200 foot-pounds from a very low RPM. So uh, it's not a it's not a screaming engine, but the thing is, in first gear you get that torque from very low revs. So it really leaps off the line nice and quickly. That's one of the reasons I think it has a very good 0 to 60. Um, the gearing is about right for it as well, so you don't have to do two gear changes to get to 60. Only one. Um, yeah, and the and the other thing obviously it's it's reasonably light. It's done 13,000 reliable miles. I've done lots of track days, um, drag racing day, uh, a full-on sort of track day, only once really, uh, where the car drove for eight hours straight. Me and my two brothers just kept jump, jumping in, jumping out, and continuing. Uh, it, I, oh, it was, I was so proud of the car that day. It did so. It was driven so hard. Drove all the way there. Drove all the way back, and uh, and it's done lots of days at Kerbera. Um, with the Reliance Scimitar Owners Club as well. A uh, little sprint track, so it's not so hard on the car, but um, yeah, I'm very proud of that car. It is what I set out for it to be, tough and fast and reliable. Of course, it could be a lot faster, um, but I, it would be at the, at, the, at the sacrifice of reliability, I think. So yeah, I just, I love it. I love that car. I've wanted one since I was little. I saw one as a kid and I love the shape. Um, I, I love it. I love it to bits. It's it's so good. It just goes and it, it sits out there in all weathers for a couple of years before I sort of get back on it and have another year enjoying it. And it just works. It's just so reliable. Uh, and yeah, I love it. Absolutely love that car. But I can't wait to do another, another big project like it. And after I've done this big heavy thing here behind me, um, then I will get on to my next uh, project for me. So these previous project videos, uh, this one's been quite hard to make actually, the, these scimitar ones, but there's another couple of videos, not won't be anywhere near like uh, as many as this one on the scimitar, but there's the biodiesel rig, I made biodiesel for a long time, um, I made an MR2 TDI, I'll do a video on that, and then my Stirling engine, I'm doing them in the order I did them, chronological order, so that's why I haven't got round to these other ones yet. The Stirling engine is the last really of the, of the big projects I've done. And, uh, and that'll be the end of these previous project videos. Uh, as I said before, I am getting on with the Land Rover some more.
progress here. We're messing around with the bulkhead. You'll um, you'll see those uh, those videos start appearing again shortly. I hope you're enjoying these videos, folks. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Thank <laughs> you.